Hey everyone, in this tutorial let's talk about making some uh, cell shaded smoke in Houdini. So let's jump right into it and get started. First I'm going to drop down a sphere, dive inside, let's turn on wire shaded, and we're going to convert this to a polygon and increase the frequency to 10. I'm also going to scale this down pretty small to 0.25. And now let's drop down a clip. So it's going to cut the sphere in half. And now I want to generate some velocity. And I'm going to do that by converting the normals to the velocity. So if I look at the normals, they're all radiating outwards. So let's drop down a wrangle. I'm going to type in a simple VEX code, which is at V at velocity equals at normal. And let's just multiply those normals by three and do a semicolon. And if we look at the velocity, you'll see that they're all radiating outwards. Okay, let's turn velocities off and drop down a pop net. And before that, I want to flatten this so the velocities don't radiate outwards, but are just uh, flat with the grid. So let's drop down a transform and scale that to 0 0.1. Now you can see if we hit play, all our particles are radiating outwards from that center point. Let's dive inside here, and we're going to increase the birth rate and decrease the life expectancy quite a bit. Let's do 0 0.4 and the variance of 0 0.1. I also don't want the particles to start at frame 1. So for the impulse activation, let's set that to 0. And for constant activation, we'll do dollar sign $F is greater than, and I want it to start on frame four. Okay, so now they don't start until frame four, but I want them to die at frame 10. So we'll type in and, and, or sorry, we'll type in and, and, dot dollar sign F is less than 10. So now the particles will start at frame four and stop at frame 10. All right, looks good. I'm gonna set the length of our timeline to about 100 frames. Okay, let's jump out of here. And now I wanna use the Pyro SOP solver to generate some smoke from this. So I'll type in configure and use the Pyro configure billowy smoke. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the smoke source and for the density i'm going to choose keep input so that we can keep the uh, particles from our pop net under the noise i'm going to add the velocity under attributes and i'm going to do the same for the uh, volume rasterize attributes i'm going to add velocity all right let's dive into our uh, pyro SOP solver and under sourcing we need to add our velocity from the particles because if we watch it now you'll see that the smoke is not inheriting the velocity from our particles let's go back to frame one click on this plus sign here the field is going to be a vector the source volume will be v for velocity and the target field will be vel for velocity now if we hit play you'll see that our smoke is expanding outwards because it's inheriting the velocity of our particles. All right, so that's looking pretty good. The next thing I wanna do is just add a collision object um, for our smoke to collide with, just a ground plane. So I believe to do that, we can come in here and allow editing of contents 
dive inside and let's jump into our dotnet and we should be able to type in ground plane here wire that into the merge and shift the ground plane up and now if I jump back to the SOP solver this should be colliding with the ground Looks good. Okay, let's adjust a few more settings in here. Under the shape, I'm gonna increase the dissipation to 0 0.1. I'm gonna add some turbulence and also decrease the swirl size quite a bit to 0 0.25. And under buoyancy scale, I don't want the smoke to rise up, so I'm just gonna set that to zero. And why don't we go ahead and lower the voxel size just a bit. All right, let's pick a frame, say here. 18 and now I want to convert this smoke to geometry so let's type in convert VDB and we're going to set this to VDB and under group let's do an asterisk so that it brings in all of these fields now I'm going to lay down another convert VDB and in this one I'm going to set it to convert back to polygons. And let's see what happened there. Let's jump back here. Maybe let's get rid of the asterisk. Let's choose density, temperature, and our velocity fields instead of using the asterisk. Well, let's try changing the ISO value. This needs to be set pretty high. Let's try 0 0.75. And another thing I'm going to do is back in our pyro solver under shape, let's decrease the disturbance and decrease the turbulence and increase the swirl size. And let's set the voxel size back to 0 0.02. Set play. Okay, what will add more style to this is smoothing it out. So let's drop down a smooth node. And let's set the filter quality to 1 and the strength to 50, maybe 35. And it just gives it a more gothic looking feel to it. Let's skip ahead a few frames. Okay, so I like how it's looking like it's shredding apart. And let's pick a frame to work on for our tune shader. This looks good. Okay. So back on the object level, let's just drop down a redshift light dome. And under light, let's turn off the background. Let's also drop down a camera by control clicking on the camera icon. Under our out tab, let's drop down a redshift render, ROP, and go inside. Under IPR, let's turn on uh, live SOP level updates so that if we make a change, we can see it in real time. And that looks pretty good. Now under shop, let's work on our shader. So we'll drop down a redshift network, call this tune shader. 
dive inside, and we're going to use a Fresnel. So let's type in RS Fresnel. And then we're also going to drop down a ramp. And let's wire the Fresnel into the input of the ramp. Under ramp, this is going to be a constant, as well as this one. And for the start of the tutorial, let's just add one in the center and make it gray, but we'll dial this in in a second. Finally, the out will go into the surface. Now let's jump back to our object level and apply that shader. Okay, under render, let's choose render cam and hit render. Okay, we're not seeing anything at the moment, and that is because there is an attribute that we need to delete that was created when we dropped down um, either the PopNet or the Pyro Solver. And I'll show that to you in a second. So let's type in attribute delete. And I believe it's under, yes, primitive attributes. We're going to delete the material. Now, if we go back to our render view and hit render, no, is there one more thing we need to delete? Let's check it out. Let's also delete the color. What else don't we need? Delete a couple of these. And I don't think we need anything in here either. So let's just drop down an asterisk in there to get rid of everything. And let's try that again. Nope. All right, I have one more try. Let's drop down a normal node. the information. Okay, everything looks good. Hmm. All right, rather than stopping the recording, I'm just going to try and figure this out with you guys. This all seems fine. Try dropping down another convert node. There we go. Okay, so now we can dial this in. Let's go back to our tune shader. First, let's drop down a grid. And now we can uh, have our smoke drop some shadows onto this, this grid. I'm going to drop down an RS material node, turn off reflections, and make this a little darker. And let's apply that to our grid. Okay. Let's hit render. There we go. That's starting to look pretty cool. It's shredding apart, very gothic looking. Under our shop tab. Now we can play with the gradient here. Sometimes you can move the white to the beginning you know, and just play with it until you get something that you like. Personally, I prefer 
just to use two colors. Maybe you don't even need the white. You know, something like that. And there you have it. So this was just a quick tutorial on how you can essentially just convert volumes into geometry and apply a uh, tune shader to create 2D looking cell shaded smoke. So have fun with it.